Hello, this is Steve and I'm recording again from my study here at our house in Troy, Illinois. I'm going to read today from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 all the way through 45. And again, I'm reading from the NIV for this. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. When Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. <coughs> when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here. 
she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had come with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was gone to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Life Application Commentary notes that up to this point in John's Gospel, Jesus has presented himself as the giver of life to various people. To Nicodemus, he offered eternal life. To the Samaritan woman, the water of life. To the official son and the lame man, the restoring of life. To the hungry multitude, the bread of life. To the blind man, the light of life. To the sheep who followed him, the abundant life. In chapter 11, Jesus is life in its ultimate expression. He is the resurrection and the life. Life after death. To the dead man, Lazarus, he offered resurrection life. Now, the Time Magazine 
has always had a reputation for printing striking photographs on the front of each issue. Indeed, they have photographers and photojournalists who cover the globe in search of just the right illustration for each week's main headline. But I was told of an issue when I was at a youth meeting in St. Louis during the late 60s that did not. The editors, file clerks, photographers, and research people had all searched high and low to find a picture that would illustrate that issue's main story, but none could be found. And so the cover of the April 8, 1966 issue of Times Magazine appeared with just these three words emblazoned across it. Is God dead? No one could come up with any kind of picture or illustration for that concept. And I must say, I'm not surprised. And as I read these verses about Lazarus earlier in the week, I found myself thinking along the same lines. You all know how I strive to come up with some sort of personal story to lead off with each week that I then use to make a point about that week's verses. But I consider this telling of the story of Lazarus. I came to realize that no tale of mind would do it justice. It must needs stand on its own. Even the various commentaries that I read try to make a number of different points about all of this. Some talk of how God once again used the pain and anguish of others. The Life Application Commentary says that Jesus loved this family and often stayed with them. He knew their pain, but did not respond immediately. His delay had a specific purpose. Some commentaries talk about how God answers some prayers immediately, while others seem to take forever. But all are answered in his time. They tell of how trials can strengthen our Christian character and draw us closer to God as we recognize our own frailties and weaknesses. They talk of Thomas's courage as he says to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. These verses show us just how truly human Jesus was in expressing his love and compassion for his friends. Shown most poignantly in what every school child should recognize as the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And all of these are very valid and important points to draw upon. But on this fifth Sunday of Lent, 
there is one overpowering message that I would like for all of us to get this morning. In Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14, the Lord shows Ezekiel a valley of dry bones and says, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel prophesied as commanded, and as he did so, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. He looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to him, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So Ezekiel prophesied as he had been commanded, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then God said to say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done it, declares the Lord. <clears throat> the gospel tells us, says the life application commentary, that Jesus raised others besides Lazarus from the dead, including Jairus' daughter and a widow's son, these people represent a cross-section of ages and social backgrounds to whom Jesus gave back human life. Lazarus's story stands out because John used it as a sign of Jesus's ultimate life-giving power and a picture of his own coming resurrection. And that, to me, is the strongest message contained in today's verses. That God truly does have the ultimate power of life and death over all of us. And that he used that power through his son, Jesus. And that he demonstrated that fact yet again when Jesus himself rose from the dead. The only difference is this. All of them, including Lazarus, who were raised, eventually died again. Except Jesus. 
Jesus. The very same Jesus who walked the roads of ancient Jerusalem, healing the sick, raising the dead, and teaching us how to love one another. The very same Jesus who was sacrificed on a cross and died for our sins is alive and well and waiting for us in his Father's house today. And when the time is right, when God's time is right, each and every one of us will be made whole and brought before him and judged. Are you ready today? Romans 8 verses 6 through 11 says, The mind of sinful man is death. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful man is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. <coughs> Jesus said to Mary in verse 25 of our reading today and to all of us today, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Let all of God's people say, Amen. May the presence of God, the Creator, give you strength. May the presence of God, the Redeemer, give you peace. May the presence of God, the Sustainer, give you comfort. May the presence of God, the Sanctifier, give you love. Amen.